Hello Targa, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it's time for another Orc Mode Workout. And today was Max Effort Squat and Deadlift Day. And it was bands today. And man, even the 50 pounds of band on the squat, I could definitely feel it. Like I had to go down, I think from the last time I did bands with 20 pounds less band tension, uh, I ended up doing about 10 pounds less and I felt like I might miss the lift if I went further. But that's fine because a max is a max. And we base these, these maxes every week on what we think we can do and we want a general upward trend in strength. And so next time I use this band tension, I will try to PR it again. Um, and the other thing I've noticed, when I rotate between chains and bands, they are not the same maxes. In other words, 30 pounds of chain tension at the top versus 30 pounds of band tension, you are not gonna be able to hit the same max. You're just not, or at least I'm not. And I think for me, that's indicative of the fact that I've gotta get faster and more explosive because just band stuff is different. And you know, that's, that's the funny thing. A lot of people will see the band training and they might say, well, I mean, I don't know, the chain seems harder. No, man, if you have never done heavy work, heavy singles or close to max training with bands, you literally have no clue. Like it, it is a totally different form of training. Um, it will challenge you in ways that, that you're not expecting and it's a different beast. It's a different beast. Um, and it's one of those things that you can't describe to someone who hasn't done it. Again, it's one of those things that you have to take someone's word for it until you actually do the band training. You don't understand what happens the way that bands, especially when you're lifting heavy. I'm not talking about your speed work. I'm not talking about working with 70 or 80%. I'm talking about when you start hitting 90% or more of a max um, against bands. It's, it's a different beast. You're going to be shocked at how much difference there is. Like, you're going to be surprised. Like, your 405 squat against bands is going to turn real quickly into way under 400, even though you might be thinking, oh, I bet I could totally just do, you know, 50 pounds of bands with uh, 375, right? Because if my max is 400 or 405 or whatever it happens to be, right, you'd be surprised how hard that's going to be. And it's because the bands really start pulling tension. Like these bands, probably the first eight to 10 inches of the range of motion, the bands start kicking in and pulling. They're already at at least 50% tension by that point, right? They're real light. They're just finger tight when I'm at the bottom of most of these lists and I set my pegs up to be that way. But around the time you start getting, approaching the midway of the lift. So for me, like right there, you notice I'm already, it's almost pulling me forward a little bit is because I'm already hitting at least 50% of the band tension. And when those bands start pulling hard, they fight you, they fight you. And so you guys notice I was having that little bit of thoracic lean at the top because it felt a lot heavier than, you know, the, the what, the 475, it would have technically been, it felt heavier. And I ran into the same thing with these. I mismeasured these. I didn't realize when I'd, I'd lay them over this way that these bands are a lot more than their advertised weight. Because when I set them up for squatting and deadlifting or for benching, they are. They're, they're as advertised weight. Well, I went to pull this and I'm like, Jesus Christ, I thought I had 150 pounds of band tension, right? That's what I thought. And I went and got my scales out and measured each band. And those blacks are actually 70 pounds by themselves without the blues there. And the blues were another 30. So that's 100 pounds on each side. So basically, I have 200 pounds of band tension there. And even pulling 335 with 200 pounds of tension, a lot of times you might be thinking, oh, that feels, that's going to feel like a 500 deadlift, right? Oh, nah, -uh. mm -mm. And you notice that the, the bands fight you at the top because what happens, it's not just the weight, it's the way the bands fight against you as you pull against them. So they don't just pull the, the weight like you would if it was chains because chains, it just adds weight, right? They're just sequential, they're, they're non-dynamic. And so it just feels like you've added extra weight plates at the top that kick in over time. So the links themselves are just like weight plates. With the bands, they jerk you back down. So when you pull against the tension, that peak tension is only when it's not moving. So if you were to take the band and just pull it up to a stop and hold it there, it might be whatever the 200 pounds at the top. But as you're pulling, the bands start jerking almost an eccentric force trying to jerk you back down while you're still in motion and they, they have a jerking effect. So what happens is once you stabilize at a given point, then that's where the, the band tension is. So honestly, even with the 200 pounds there, it feels like more 
than 535 at the lockout, which is what I had. It feels heavier than that because of the way the bands pull against you and they will pull you out of your group. So essentially when you're when you're working with bands, because they're so unstabilizing as you get to the the which should be the easiest part of the lift, that they will try to pull you out of your bar path. And so it forces you to stabilize and fight against them. So it, it's, it's a really interesting training effect. And I think a lot of people would be surprised that, that even with something like 50 or 100 pounds of band tension on a lift of how light of a weight they're gonna be forced to use if they actually try to lift a max, like to a one rep max against it. It's a different beast. All right, on to accessory and assistance movements. Uh, doing chest supported rows, five by five every workout. So that gives me 20 sets of these every week. This is one of my bread and butter lifts because at this point I am trying to build my upper back. It works my grip, some extra bicep work, everything else. This is an important lift for me because my back is really wide. I have a really wide thick back. I need a little more upper back. So I'm not pulling these to my lower chest or my stomach like I do a pen lay. I am pulling these to my upper chest. So you notice I'm getting flare at the top. Uh, so I'm actually pulling these above my nipple line. So this is going to the upper chest. And what I'm doing here is we're, we're building my whole upper back. It's still going to build lats. It's still going to build all that. But we're building upper back. So some people said, why wouldn't you do just a pull-up instead if you're going to completely deload the lower back? You might as well do a pull-up. Well, because pull-up works a lot more lat and lower back and it works less mid-trap, um, less rear delt, all those things. So I need to develop that entire upper back region not just lats. So I need rhomboids, I need thoracic erectors, I need mid traps, um, rear delts, all of that stuff. So I'm doing it for those also. And then it's obviously a grip exercise for me too. Um, so again, it, it's letting me reduce the amount of grip work I need to do every week. So I can focus on grip just on my deadlift days, which would be today. Uh, so then we did the hip belt squats. I'm doing some of these from the side so that we can assess depth. Now that we've got the proper belt, we're getting depth. This is the depth we need to be getting all the time. Also, because I'm, I'm doing more deadlift volume now on the speed days, I'm not doing these on the speed days. So since I'm only going to do these once a week on a 5x5, five five, on my max days, I need to really make them count. Which means I went up a plate, we're going to try to get as strong as possible on a 5x5, five five, using these on, again, my heaviest day, so that I can focus on dynamic stuff on, the, on just the squat and deadlift dynamic effort day, because I'm doing a lot more volume with the, those lifts on it. Um, so it doesn't have as much room for this because I don't need it. But this is where it needs to be. It's going to be on this max day so that we are getting enough training volume in my quads and hips to hypertrophy from this. Because otherwise, I might not be getting enough training stimulus to actually grow from this day. And I need to be growing from this day. And particularly things like my quads. I mean, my back is getting enough stimulation because we're deadlifting. We're doing, again, accommodating resistance on box squats. And then we're doing all those rows. We're getting back work. We're not getting enough hip and quad work. And this will let me do it in a way that doesn't have any axial loading. So again, this is going to be a very, very important staple exercise. All right, it's going to be a serious hypertrophy movement for me. And 5x5 five five lets me balance that, that tension I need with it. And, you know, people say, why don't you do more reps for your quads? Because I don't need more reps for my quads. This will give me the functional hypertrophy that I need uh, in the rotation of my training. All right. My quads are a weak link in my squat. Let's be honest here. What two things are going to contribute to a little bit of thoracic rounding I still have? Well, obviously getting tighter is part of it. But I need more quad strength. And I need more upper back strength. Well, we're addressing that. We're addressing that with the totality of my training. We're doing specialized lifts to address it further. But the totality of my training is also geared towards particularly all the upper back stuff. I need to really, really thicken that region up tremendously. Uh, and I already have good overall back development, but that area needs more and I feel like it'll, it'll keep me moving forward. So we got our five by five with this, with hitting the proper depth now, uh, using six plates. We're doing it with six plates now, which again, we're getting up to, you know, a decent amount of weight there. It's, it's not tremendous, not a massive amount of weight. It's, uh, I don't know, what is that, about 270? Yeah. So we need to get that up to, to 300. And that's what we'll work towards. Work towards getting it to 300. Uh, but that's going to take a little while. It's going to take a little while. You know, it is what it is, guys. So 270, though, so getting my 5x5 five five is a good start. We want to get it to 300 for that. And I think when it gets to 300, that's going to be a respectable quad strength for what I'm trying to do. Now... That's kind of like my incline bench goal, though, isn't it? 
but we got it today and it was challenging. It was hard. So I hope it has been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.